be on wrestling. This is Denver, Colorado, the man, not the place. Main event time here at the tournament for tomorrow. Two block A studio taping. Non-tournament action. Two competitors who will be entering the tournament tomorrow. JT Dunn is going to be competing the first round of block B against Candice Murray. And Kimberly is going to be going one-on-one -on -one for the first time ever with Rory Mondo, somebody that she has trained alongside at the CCW Academy and with a pedigree like that. It's no wonder she has earned herself a spot in this year's tournament. But that is tomorrow. Tonight, she's going to face JT Dunn in the main event in non-tournament action. JT Dunn has not had the easiest 2013 for a star on the rise in the world of professional wrestling. Unfortunately, he has come up short. Nothing to be ashamed of, but facts. Nevertheless, losing to Johnny Gargano at American Rana, losing to Michael Elgin at point of no return, entering what could be the biggest weekend of his career. I see him shaking Kimberly's hand. Hopefully, he's not taking her too lightly because Kimberly is certainly up for the challenge. Immediately charging over the form and another one. On him with the third. While well, Kimberly trying to get JT Dunn in a position, it took a little bit too much time, and Dunn responds with a clubbing blow across the back. We're gonna send Kim for the ride off the ropes. Kim able to avoid contact in that strike attempt. Immediately goes for that waist lock. Kim with a lower center of gravity. You gotta think that she's gonna be trying to connect with some strikes should the opportunity present itself. Kim comes rushing in, and JT Dunn just dumped right on the top of his head. I don't like the way that arm is hanging by his side. She might have shortened JT Dunn by a couple of inches. And JT Dunn staggered on the ropes. Kim comes charging in. Did the best that she could to brace her fall. Still stumbling around on the outside. JT Dunn just kicking right in the chest. Dunn's got a sight set on Kimberly, looking to dive on the outside. Too early. Caught in the midsection with that kick from Kimberly. Well, he's precariously positioned on the ropes. How about one across the kidneys for good measure? Kimberly, I think, for the next couple days, is going to prove to be one of the toughest competitors on the independent wrestling scene, male or female. And I think a lot of that has to do, again, with where she is trained at the CCW Wrestling Academy. Just listen to the impact on those strikes if you don't believe me. We're gonna send JT down for the ride. Stopping her in her tracks. Caught her with that soul bond. And again with the forearm across the neck. JT Dunn, perhaps shaking the cobwebs, trying to regain his bearings. He sends Kim face first into that top turnbuckle. He's got her sandwich in the corner, perhaps planning his next course of it course of attack. That happens to be an elbow. Of course, you notice that red elbow pad which JT Dunn likes to remove to connect with that rolling elbow which he has been using to knock out opponents for the past number of months. For a long time, JT Dunn relying on that modified lung blower to finish off his opponents, but instead has been knocking them out, and as a result, has been dubbed the new knockout kid. Never mind the rolling elbow. How about that chop to the chest? Now looking to send Kim for the ride. Able to shift her body's way. Had the reversal, but JT out of the way. Oh, man! Just kicked her right in the face. Sweeps out the leg. And here's some of that signature combination offense on a JT toe. Look how little motion was wasted. Even that cross body block in the corner, Kim Trapp nowhere to go, only good for a two count. I think that JT Dunn's starting to realize he's in for a long night. Now this cut Kimberly by the head. Ref bring her up to her feet. No. Thought perhaps he was going to bring her up to her feet so that he could strike the head once again. But instead, something else in mind. Look for that super kick off the ropes. Kim takes the leg out from underneath them and spike it JT Dunn face first into the canvas. Modified Bulldog, did she have enough impact? No. 
Not sure if Kim is starting to get frustrated or perhaps just trying to rally support of the fans and wrestlers on ringside. The first time in Beyond Wrestling history that we've opened up to a studio taping for our fans to attend. But that's just how important tournament for tomorrow too is. Now JT done with that lateral press, even with the leg hooked. Kim getting the shoulder off the mat. What a show the fans have seen here tonight. Wrapping up block A. Just a few minutes ago, we now know that Green Ant will advance to Fed Music on Sunday to face the winner of block B. JT looking to retreat on the outside. I'm sure both of these competitors would love to face Green Ant on Sunday. They've got to survive tonight first. Of course, getting caught up in the spirit of competition, it's hard not to when you've got all of your peers and the most passionate wrestling fans on the planet. Sometimes it leads to mistakes like that. Kim Driven skull first into the post. JT Dunn doing what he needed to to stay alive. Resetting the count. Now he's got Kim once again. Not looking to bring her in the ring, instead looking to put a hole in her chest. Okay. Finally thinking better of it, rolling her in the ring. Quick to get into a pin. Kimberly is on at one. A very defiant kick out. Joe and JT done that there's still plenty of gas in the tank. JT done coming across the chest with those elbows. He can connect with such a variety of strikes from so many different positions with so many different body parts. You've got the fist, the forearm, the elbow, the knee, the toe of the foot, the heel. Beat the shit out of JT, come on. JT Dunn may not be the biggest dog in the fight, but he's certainly figured out the best way to survive. As a result, he's been given a number of incredible opportunities, which he has made the most of. But he's still got a long way to go. Kimberly now, that low center of gravity, getting underneath her opponent to pick him up and drop him down with that side slam. To help her stabilize herself, especially if she's getting knocked around, trying to find her balance. Perhaps get out of the way, retaliate with a strike of her own. Right there, just taking too much time. The kick right in the bread basket. JT Dunn maybe looking for the Dave Cole bomb. Got the arms butterflied. Kimberly proving to be too strong. Look at that jawbreaker. Able to get added extension. Going lower to the mat and the hands of Gurry. That back brain kick finding the mark. JT's crumpled up in a heap. I don't know. The referee might have been out of position. That could have been the difference between this match being over and this match continuing. Kimberly having only competed once before for Beyond Wrestling against one of the female yeah, yeah. students from the CZW Academy. Yeah. And Beyond Wrestling yeah. debuted at the CZW school earlier this year. And even in that period of time, only about six or seven months, Kimberly's rise on the independent scene has been meteoric. Look at that counter from JT Dunn, though. And as Kimberly starts to face a higher caliber of an opponent, that's what she's going to be prepared for. JT Dunn just exploding in with that clothesline. That's about all he's got left. He was spent, especially after eating that pump kick. These two laid it all on the line. We'll see who's gonna be able to get to their feet first. Be a shame to see this one end in a draw. You almost couldn't blame either competitor though if they laid down. So much riding on the line tomorrow. We saw what the first tournament for Martin did to launch independent wrestling careers. And Cam once again lured into the trap of JT Dunn. And the suck it bomb! Springboarding in the center of the ring away from the ropes! Kim still kicks out! One of the most difficult parts of the strategy when you become so reliant on your strikes is that 
most instances, especially for JT Dunn's rolling elbow, you need to connect on a standing opponent. I think JT Dunn realizing that perhaps instead it's going to be changing up his strategy. I don't know what he's got in mind right here, just tossing Kent into the corner. Just a straight shot, doing damage to his own hand. Now taking her to the high rent district. JT Dunn going up after her. Kimberly trying to fight back. JT firmly with his footing. Starting to stumble. Not sure if he has the leverage he needs. Kim holding on. And JT Dunn left that midsection open. Kim firing off a few shots. Caught him with the drop kick from the top rope. JT Dunn, the impact turning him inside out. Still on his feet. But for how much longer? Caught him with that clothesline. Kimberly coming alive. Wow, oh, running his head with the Hurricane Ron right in the pin. No wasted motion whatsoever, but JT Dunn still kicking out. Just a second away from being beat by Kimberly here tonight. Still gonna think that that would be an upset. As much as Kimberly has improved. JT Dunn is quickly becoming one of the guys on the indie scene. Not only as a singles competitor, but also growing the Juicy Product brand. Tag team alongside David Starr. He'll be competing in Block B tomorrow. I can't believe Kimberly's still competing tonight. How did she kick out of that super kick? The added impact, the added momentum, rebounding off the ropes. Nowhere to go but down. JT Dunn, perhaps starting Telegraph. And he's going to be looking for that rolling elbow. You see him adjusting the elbow pad. Is he looking to take it off? Kim had it scouted. Listen to these shots. Oh, JT Dunch trying to push her away. The kick to the leg. Dunn fires a shot to the chest. Kim responds in kind. Every single one of these shots a potential knockout blow. Now both competitors striking at the same time. What's going on here? Taking off the elbow pads, taking off the wrist tape. Things are about to get down and dirty. Again, that tape used to protect the joints, but also does a little bit to protect your opponent as you're striking them as well. These two looking for maximum impact on every single blow. And look at Kimberly standing toe to toe with JT Dunn. JT kicked the layout from underneath her. Oh, just kicked him right in the face. How is he still on his feet? A bit of misdirection, JT was braced for the kick to the leg, that time got out of the way. Not gonna make the same mistake twice. Caught her with the knee. Kim though, another kick to the head. And now she's got JT Dunn hooked up. Ow! A Gonzo bomb? One, two, three! Oh, wow! I can't even believe what we just saw! And that just goes to show you all it takes is three seconds. What an exchange! Capped off! by one of the most dangerous maneuvers in all of professional wrestling. That'll put your opponent down. And that's a new one as far as I'm concerned from Kimberly. I've been scouting her work in CCW and WSU. And I don't believe I've ever seen her use the Gonzo Bump to finish off an opponent. But now knocking off JT Dunn. One of the most promising wrestlers on the Beyond Wrestling roster and at the same time, putting every other competitor in block B of tournament for tomorrow two on notice. Right now, I gotta say that Kimberly is gonna be my pick to take block B. If she can get to green at yeah, maybe even take it all. What a match, both competitors landed on the line. But Kimberly coming out on top over JT Dunn.